The Westminster Confession of Faith was produced in 1646 to be a confession of the Church of England. In the long run, the Church of England would revert back to Episcopal polity and today does not hold to the Westminster Confession. However, shortly after the Confession was written, the Church of Scotland, which had taken on Presbyterian polity during the Scottish Reformation, replaced their Scots Confession with the Westminster. The Confession was also modified by the Congregationalists, who had Reformed or Calvinist theology but not Presbyterian polity, and so in 1658 they produced the Savoy Declaration, a recension of Westminster. Likewise, the Calvinistic Particular Baptists would put their hand to the Savoy Declaration to produce the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith. However, for most of Presbyterianism, there was no need for a new confession. So today, when you look at Presbyterian denominations the world over, you will find that they hold to the Westminster Confession as a standard of doctrine and practice yet today. Looking to the United States, you'll see that it's there in the Theologically Liberal Presbyterian Church USA and the Theologically Conservative Presbyterian Church in America, Orthodox Presbyterian Church, Evangelical Presbyterian Church, Eco, a Covenant Order of Presbyterians, Associate Presbyterian Reformed Church, and many, many more. But if you look a bit closer, you'll see that something is up. Take the Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church. If you go to their website and download the Confession, you will find on page 71, chapter 33 of The Last Judgment. And then on page 72, you find chapters 34 and 35 aren't there. Instead, there's a conspicuous note, deleted, General Synod, 2014. What's going on? In the Presbyterian Church USA, the two chapters are there, but in the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, they aren't, and there's not even a note. In the same way, the PCA ends the confession at chapter 33. Meanwhile, head over to Eco's copy, and the two chapters reappear, except they are chapters 9 and 10, and all the other chapters after are renumbered. So what's going on? Let's solve this as quickly as possible. When the Confession was written in 1646, there were only 33 chapters. In 1903, two more chapters were written and added to the Confession of the Northern Presbyterian Church body in the United States called the Presbyterian Church in the United States of America, or PCUSA. The Southern body, the Presbyterian Church in the United States, or PCUS, added the chapters in 1942. The text was slightly different between the two, but nearly identical. The main reason that the chapters were added by the PCUSA in 1903 has been generally recognized as a weakening of the Calvinism of the Confession, so that the denomination could entice churches in another denomination, the Cumberland Presbyterian Church, which had Arminian leanings to merge into their church body. The ploy worked, and half the Cumberland membership joined the PCUSA. The Orthodox Presbyterian Church, when it was founded in 1936 as a split off the Presbyterian Church in the United States of America, reverted back to the 33-chapter formulation, and so is never held to the last two chapters. When in 1973 the PCA separated from the PCUS, they too dropped the two chapters. The Evangelical Assembly of Presbyterian Churches in America, or EAPCA, formed in 2004, retains the chapters. When the Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church in 2014 chose to remove the two chapters, part of what they said about them is as follows. In 1903, after considerable debate, the declaratory statement and two additional chapters were used to considerably weaken the doctrine of predestination in the whole of WCF. J. Gresham Machen characterized the changes and additions of 1903 as compromising amendments, as highly objectionable, a calamity, and a very serious lowering of the Presbyterian and Reformed flag. Our committee finds that our current version of the WCF deviates from our historic identity as an evangelical, reformed, and confessional church that is passionate about the gospel. Our current WCF with the two additional chapters of the Holy Spirit and of the gospel are relics of 20th century theological modernism's movement away from historic confessional Calvinism. Both additional chapters, by emphasizing human agency and salvation, alter the original WCF's design that highlights God's sovereign, eternal decree to save sinners by grace alone. Here's part of chapter 35, the gospel of the love of God in missions, as found in the Evangelical Presbyterian Church's present Westminster Confession, that may shed light on the controversy. In the gospel, God declares his love for the world and his desire that all men should be saved, reveals fully and clearly the only way of salvation, promises eternal life to all who truly repent and believe in Christ, invites and commands all to embrace the offered mercy, and by his spirit accompanying the word, pleads with men to accept his gracious invitation. 
The two added chapters aren't the only fiddling that the Americans have done with the Westminster Confession, however. As pointed out on the website of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, changes have been made to several chapters from as early as 1788, adding things like, it is the duty of civil magistrates to protect the church of our common Lord without giving the preference to any denomination of Christians above the rest in chapter 23, and removing the part of chapter 25 that called the Pope the Antichrist. Some groups like the EAPCA have modified chapter 24 on divorce and remarriage. The Bible Presbyterian Church, founded as a rare premillennial Presbyterian denomination, also made changes to the confession at their first general synod, changing references to the last day to instead say the return of the Lord Jesus and other similar wording, reflecting their view in a premillennial rapture. They also made changes to the catechisms, also done at other times by other denominations, but which is not the focus of this video. In 1980, the Reformed Presbyterian Church of North America, not wanting to amend the Westminster Confession, but seeing need for more modern clarification, adopted a testimony, which in their constitution is put in a parallel column to the WCF with point-by-point -point clarifications. They say of this, Changes in the application of truth are needed because of changing situations in each generation. Some current topics of vital importance for the Christian church were unknown in the 17th century. Therefore, the Reformed Presbyterian Church of North America presents its testimony applying scripture truth to the contemporary situation. Especially in America, if you are researching a denomination that claims adherence to the Westminster Confession, don't assume we're talking about the word-for-word -word original. You will need to do a little bit of deeper digging to see what's been changed. Subscribe for more history and informational videos on Christian denominations.